I thought it could never happen to all the people I became, my programs lost in legends, the beasts so very tame. Like so many of my generation, I started out with basic. I still have a soft spot for this language because, like Ford, it bred so many different incarnations. I briefly moved to Pascal, but no program survived, because I converted the major project I was working on to C. I stayed with C for over a decade, and it still is my go-to language when I need the very last spark of performance from my machine. And then I wrote 40H, which is a Ford dialect. And once again, Ford called me by my name. Because this was not the first time I did Ford. I knew Ford. I used it on my Sinclair Spectrum. I interfaced it with my floppy drive, so I could save and load blocks to and from disk, transforming the entire system into a true workstation. I just got out because I couldn't find a suitable compiler for my PC. And now I got it back, better than ever. The funny thing was, the more this compiler matured, the more I grabbed it to solve everyday problems. First because it was cool to actually use your own compiler of course, but in time because I genuinely thought it was the best tool available for the job. And once I figured out how to handle libraries, those solutions flowed back into the compiler until I had a vast array of solutions available which sped up development significantly. Now, Chuck Moore may not believe in libraries, but I most certainly do. Sometimes good enough is just good enough. For the special, because it stripped away everything COBOL, OHOL and FORTRON introduced, to begin with syntax. FORT has no real syntax. FORT parser is more like a cookie cutter than an actual parser. Chop the whole darn thing up in white space delimited words. And it can get away with that because all data transfer between routines is done transparently to the stack. That is, without copying anything. No stack frames are harmed in the process. Of course, you can't do without a symbol table. Only in Ford it's usually a linked list instead of an actual table. And you call it a dictionary. The function pointer of a dictionary entry points to what essentially is a table of call addresses terminated by a return. Now, the REPL is a work of art as well. It works by three simple rules. Is it a number, throw it on the stack. If it's a command, execute it. And if all that fails, issue an error. Now, what's the fuss all about? You strip every convenience from the language and then something magical should happen? That's like saying I strip your house of the AC, the heating, all bathroom commodities and the kitchen and all of a sudden your life becomes much better. By the way, you got to sleep on floor as well, like a homeless person. I'm not gonna tell you that you can backfit all these facilities, because while you can, they're mostly superfluous in my humble opinion. Ford is a way of thinking. And yes, true, Ford isn't even unique in that regard. Hope is a way of thinking, Haskell is a way of thinking, Rust is a way of thinking, but Ford requires a unique way of thinking, one that changes your way to approach a problem, and that allows you to create very robust programs, requiring very little code in a fraction of the time. Now, why is not the whole world using Ford? Because it requires a huge investment of time to become proficient and most people will never even acquire this level of proficiency. I can easily see the difference between the program I wrote a decade ago and the programs I'm writing now. And a decade ago, I'd been programming Ford for 20 straight years. Let's say you want to crack this nut. Where do you begin? With thinking Ford. This book was published in 1984, and to this day it is a required reading if you want to be a top-notch programmer. Even if you never intend to learn Ford, read it. By the way, it's free. I'll leave a link in the description. You'll get an entirely new outlook on software design. Ford is like the Tao. It is a way. And is realized on Fallout. Its fragility is its strength. Its simplicity is its direction. I hear you say, show me the magic. Okay, man, cool down. 
I'll show you the magic. For starters, I use 40H at work. And at one time, I worked for a client that received a dozen CSV files each month. And then some guy took these files, pulled them in Excel and tried to make sense of it. First of all, they all had a different layout. Second, these files could contain duplicate records. And one of them had to be selected. Third, they could contain new records and he had to issue new identifiers for them. Because of the lack of standardization, dates could come in all kinds of formats. Loads of other fields had to be checked for validity. It took this guy an entire workday to merge all this stuff, and the result was still abysmal. So we had a meeting, I stated that the only way out was automation. They said it couldn't be done. It would take far too long to achieve that. I'll do it in five days, I said. And to my surprise, they gave me my five days. In those days, I wrote a 1500 line, 46k source, it worked perfectly. It did the entire job in 30 seconds flat. But the client wasn't happy. They wanted to see so it could be maintained by a third party. So they sent me home again for another five days to write down the technical specifications. And then they sent those specifications to some C-shop to get an estimate. And they stated it would take them three months to replicate all functionality. To make a long story short, the program outlived its usefulness as a pure Ford program. And to dispel another Ford myth, I maintained it for over a year. Ford is not a write-only language. Another time I required a data dump from some monitoring tool. And my colleague came back and said, you're not in luck. It's an XML file. You'll have a hard time parsing that one. Well, I hadn't. I wrote a small interpreter that considered all text to be executable. Some cleared the buffer, some parsed and inserted the field. Some were just delimiters and some wrote a record to disk. Within minutes I had the perfect CSV files. Easy interpreters. That's what Ford does for you or to you. But I think that replicating a known functionality is more suited to capture the imagination. I guess you know get up. It's a C function that allows you to parse command line arguments. You've ever seen it? I think it's a horrible mess with lots of branches and global variables. So I started to convert it to Ford and then I thought this is not what I want, this is not Ford. So I started anew and came up with a whole new solution. Six word, three of them public, one single global. I like this one a whole lot better. And it has served me well over the years. Another time I need to check whether a string represented a floating point number. Now I could have pulled in an entire floating point library just to use to float. I could have written a custom routine. But the most natural thing was to use a regular expression. And then I got thinking. An entire library just to compile and interpret a regular expression? Why not compile a regular expression straight away? By encoding it in Ford. And this is it. Yeah, that's all. Six words, four public words, no variables. The basic idea is simple. If a character matches, advance the cursor and leave a true flag. If not, the cursor remains unchanged and a false flag is issued. Then you combine things so longer sequences can be parsed in one go. And this is the whole thing. Any sign is ok, followed by an optional point, followed by at least one digit. If no point has been issued so far, check again. Finally, an optional exponent. Optionally followed by a sign and ending in a bunch of digits. That's it. You can build some quite elaborate expressions with that one. For my UBasic Ford interpreter I needed dynamic strings. And there are dynamic string libraries in Ford. Some as massive as the UBasic Ford interpreter itself. Because they replicate the entire string word set. That was not what I was looking for. So I played with some concepts and came up with this one. It's ok, it works, but I still was not convinced. So I came up with this one. 6 words in total, 5 public ones. No TS count converts a string to an address count form. So there was no need to reinvent the wheel. The trick is, it allocates a new string when it is changed, while holding on to the old string to the very end, so you can use that old string in whatever expression you fancy. Yes, it requires initialization, but that's it. 
you can turn any old variable into a dynamic string instantly, simply by attaching a very small dynamically allocated string to it. This one proved to be so useful I started using it anywhere, even in my OOP programs. There are many more examples. Like a small database management system I built, 400 lines in all. That one really deserves its own video. Or on my preprocessor, which I already discussed in great detail on this channel. You can find the link in the description. Now the $64,000 question is, could I have built those in any other language? Of course, but I didn't. Because in my mind I always overcomplicated things in the very early stages, so I never got started. I am not the first one to notice that Ford and shell scripting have things in common. In shell scripting, if you don't get the result you want, you plug in an extra command to filter or convert the input. And then you chain all those commands together with pipes. In Ford, you plug in another word. And you chain all those words invisibly together by the stack. You transform whatever you got in whatever you want. There are no variables to cloud your chain of thought. It's like a stream of consciousness, only interrupted by the occasional stack operator. And that is what makes Ford different. It allows me to make programs I would have never come up with if I had to design them using another language. Basically, you start out with something very simple and then just stretch it out to its full complexity without even realizing it. That's Ford. Now, this is the point where I'm supposed to say, go for it, go for it. But I'm not going to do that. Ford is hard. Writing really good Ford is really hard. It's not for everyone. Bernd Paisan, one of the authors of G-Ford, once wrote that Ford is an amplifier. Quote, unquote, a good programmer will write even better code in Ford. A bad programmer will write abysmal code in Ford. And I'm sorry to say, but most programmers are quite bad. And ending on that positive note, I'm Hans Beesmer and this was Back and Forth.